journey to Hackney. But we're going to a very different Hackney to the one which is there now. We're going back to the 70s and 80s to a black and white world. It's a scruffier place. It's a bashed about, still war-torn place. It's a poorer place in many, many senses, but it's rich in other ways. It's rich in community. It's rich in action. Um, it's rich in some fantastic characters. And they're all in this book called Hackney Archive, Work and Life, 1971 to 1985. And they're all the work of Neil Martinson, who's here with us now. We'll, Neil, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So first of all, congratulations on the book, because it is incredibly evocative, I think. Yeah, I mean, it took me a number of years to put the work together. Um, I had a lot of negatives, piles of negatives in boxes, like many photographers. Yeah. And, of course, now you need to digitise them. And actually, it probably took me about three years to go through them. And one of the things that was fascinating for me, and I hope for people that buy the book, is I found a number of pictures which I'd never really noticed before. And they had a, a bit of a different meaning now because you're looking back on them and you're seeing it quite differently to probably when I took the pictures. Why were you taking the pictures in the first place? Talk us, what were you doing out there? Well, when I took them in the first place, the first pictures I, I ever took, I mean, I was very young. I was about 17. And it was a way to, in a sense, explore the world. I mean, I came across photography through a public library, right. through Stoke Newton Library. Were you a Hackney boy? Were you growing uh, up? Yeah, yeah, I, I grew up in Hackney. I was born and grew up in Hackney. And I used to go to Stoke Newton Library to get books for my mum. She liked romantic fiction. And each week I would go and grab four books for her. And at first when I went, I would try and select different ones. But of course, I couldn't remember. And in the end, I realised she didn't really notice. <laughs> it didn't matter. Really. It didn't matter. So I just grabbed four books for her. And then I noticed there was a photography section and I started to look at that and it was a picture of, a, of the world that I had, I'd never seen because if you grew up in Hackney, you know, in the 60s and 70s, your world was quite small, yeah. really. You know, my parents, my dad was a cabinet maker, my mum worked in a shop. You know, they'd never been abroad, they'd never travelled. You know, they were happy for what they had, which was they had jobs, yeah. right? And so I started looking at that and wow, that's, that's really interesting. And there was a camera shop in Stoke Newton High Street and it had these amazing cameras, you know, and like the thing about the cameras is they had like lots of knobs and dials on them. And if you're a boy growing up, you think, wow, that's an amazing bit of kit. And I thought, well, maybe I could save up. I was working in Woolies in Stoke Newton. So I saved up enough money to buy a Russian-made camera called a Zenit E, which was built like a tank. It was very heavy, actually quite difficult to use. And I started to go out, and like many people, I kind of went down to the markets because... What, down the Ridley Road? Up Ridley Zoom Road, or? Brick Lane, uh, to take pictures. And they were my the first pictures I ever took. And you kind of go to those places because, you know, when you're first taking pictures, you're a bit nervous. They're quite public places. And I started to take pictures there, not with any kind of real design or intent, but just to, to try things out. I mean, those pictures, which are sort of in the very beginning of the book, uh, from, from 1971 of Ridley Road and also Brick Lane and all of that, they really do look like they're from a very different age, don't they? I well, mean, they look like... If you'd have said to me, this is a shot of Bulgaria in the 1930s, yeah. you might have thought, yeah, fair enough, I'll have that. Well, one of the things I say is that, you know, Hackney at that time, and indeed many parts of London, really was still recovering from the war. Yeah, it was, there was debris everywhere, yeah. weren't there? I mean, it's... And, like, the street I lived in, one side of the whole street was just empty houses, derelict houses. That when I was a kid, we used to go and play in. Yep. But in terms of the people, if you look at the pictures, uh, for example, most of the men are wearing hats. You never see that. Or overcoats. Yep. And, of course, down Brick Lane as well, if you look at the pictures, it's mostly men, very few women. So it's a very different kind of world then. And also very poor. I mean, I think... One of the things that's It's funny because I don't think we knew we were poor. <laughs> no, I, I think that's right. I think that's absolutely right. No one told us we were no, poor. No, but actually some of it was a bit desperate. I mean, in Brick Lane, they were selling food past its sell-by day. Yeah. I mean, it was a bit grim, to you know. And one of the things I slightly rail about is that there's a bit of romanticisation about it. 
And actually, you know, if you look at some of the pictures of people at work, it's bloody hard work that people were doing. It was very physical, hard, manual work. Conditions were terrible as well, weren't they, for yeah. a lot of people? One of the other things that comes out in the book is, is the sort of political side of things. Because this is a time of quite intense political strife, isn't it? Particularly yeah. in places like Hackney and Islington and whatever. Yeah, I think what happened in the 70s and 80s, previous to that, I think you had, in a sense, people quite passive, yeah. kind of accepted well, what was around. Well, they'd been the war and all of that. Yeah, and, you know. and didn't want to cause trouble. And I guess it must have been the kind of 1968 generation. I mean, like, my teachers were 68 generation, and almost certainly they would be sacked nowadays because they introduced us to all kinds of ideas. <laughs> And, in fact, when I was at school, we went on a school strike, which probably doesn't happen nowadays. The NUSS? Nowadays. Yeah, that's it. Well, it does, actually, if you think about climate change. Oh, in that's fact, true. Let's be, let's be fair that's to true. today's generation, it does. Yeah, and that's a great thing, Yeah, I think. And so what you had was people starting to say, actually, we deserve a bit better. You know, we don't have childcare, for example. The housing was appalling. I mean, I took a lot of pictures in bad housing, Um were you getting paid for this by this stage? Well, some of it I was paid for. Mostly I wasn't. Mostly I was working with different campaigns. So there was a campaign around homelessness in Hackney. People were in, families were in terrible bed and breakfast. Well, they called them bed and breakfast yeah. hotels, which was a complete misnomer. These were places in Finsbury Park. Families were in a single room. There was nowhere for the children. The walls were dripping with damp. It was dangerous. It wasn't safe for them. So I was really working with mostly with different campaigns. Sometimes you concentrate on specific people, don't you? Like the barber who's on the front cover. Mm. And then there's a teacher with his big sort of Afro hair in yeah, yeah. 1970s style. And... Well, there was a really great project in Hackney called Centerprise, which was the first bookshop to open in about 1971. And I got very involved with that project. And one of the things Centerprise did was publish books that were by and about local people. And one of the books we published was called Working Lives, where we documented the lives of people in Hackney, which is probably the first time that had ever been done. And we took photos of them as well. It was, it was actually a hugely ambitious undertaking. Uh, there were five photographers, 120 photos, 13 accounts of working life. And I think what that did was gave a real insight into the lives of people in Hackney and what it was like living from day to day. And some of the stories that they told were about hardship, but some of them were about joy as well and a sense of community. Um, the police don't come very well out of the book, do they? <laughs> well, in the 80s, it was, you know, Hackney was not a great, great time in terms of policing and what was going on on the streets. Yeah. I mean, there's one picture I took uh, during the riots in 1981, which I think is probably one of the few pictures ever taken during those riots, partly because it was so dangerous. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I don't think it's a great picture because I was a bit of a way away because to get any closer would have been pretty dangerous. Um, and things were blowing up. You know, the community was not happy with the way they were being treated by the police. There were lots of demonstrations taking place on a regular basis. And lots of racism. I mean, racism that was just overt. I yeah, mean. it was. I mean, if you were a black kid in Hackney, you didn't stand a lot of chances. It is a fantastic collection. Where have they been all these times? Just sitting in your, your loft or something? Well, some were used at the time. A lot in the book had never been seen before. I mean, I had an exhibition uh, about a year ago in Hackney. And a load of people came to it and were really interested. One of the most fascinating insights I, I got was quite a lot of younger people came, so like in their 20s, and they were looking at the pictures of the hospital closures that took place in the 80s, of which there were a lot in East London. And they said to me, God, so all this stuff about cuts has happened before. It's like, yeah, it has. I mean, it's funny because my cousin Ian used to live in, in Hackney Wick on Fish Island and I used oh, yeah. to spend a lot of time there. And there's the pictures of Lesneys, aren't there, for example, which again looks like a, a, a gone world. Yeah, I mean, Lesneys was really important in Hackney. It employed thousands of people, particularly women. women yeah. And their buses were kind of, I think, quite iconic because they would pick up women 
at times that suited them in terms of childcare, but also suited the company, obviously. This was Matchbox, wasn't it? Yeah, was Matchbox it, yeah. Toys. Yeah. And um, that closed in 1981, and I happened to take pictures there just before the closure, which was very sad, actually, because it meant, well, hundreds, if not thousands, of livelihoods suddenly disappeared. And actually, it was a sign of the times, because what happened was all of the equipment was taken to Hong Kong, and that's where they started to make the cars again, where the labour was cheaper. I mean, you don't live a million miles from Hackney now. You're only up the road. Yeah. When you go there now, what do you think? Because it has changed. And in many yeah, ways, yeah. it's better. Yeah. It's, it's nicer and cleaner and yeah, greener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, I have mixed feelings, really, to be honest, because there are some good things. Like my dad worked in the um, workshops in Shoreditch. Now, those workshops were empty for about 20 years yeah. after that industry collapsed. Now you've got the digital industry making money out of thin air. <laughs> I mean, if my dad was still alive, he just wouldn't be able to <laughs> comprehend that. Um, and so it's kind of brought more life in. It's also brought people in from different parts of the world again with different kinds of skills. I am, on the other hand, house prices and rental prices have gone up, which does mean people are being excluded yep. from being there. So I kind of worry about that because I think, you know, I think diversity is important. I think providing opportunities for people is important. And maybe that's diminished a bit, you know, I'm not sure. But there's still a kind of liveliness and energy there that's fantastic. And that's great to be in. Well, if you want to see the pictures, and they are brilliant, they're all black and white, and they go from sort of early 70s up to, to the 1980s. It's called The Hackney Archive, Work and Life, 1971 to 1985 by Neil Martinson. And it's published by the Hoxton Mini Press. Neil, thank you very, very much. Thank you. It is really good, that, that book of pictures of Hackney. If you, it's, not, it's not my part of the world, and I didn't really know Hackney back then. But you could substitute Hackney for Islet, and you could substitute Hackney for Notting Hill, you could substitute Hackney for Brixton. I mean, it really is sort of any one of those parts of inner London that was going through massive changes at the time, and yet still somehow felt like a, a, a Victorian. Some of those pictures look positively Victorian. I mean, it really, you know, they're amazing. It is such a different world. Um, and they're all in there in that book. It's really.